So with our first speaker, we have Christopher Holmgaard of uh, Model.ai with a session on engaging bots for multiplayer games. Christopher, I did see you, where you gone? There you are. <laughs> Lovely stuff, you're all good to go. Yeah. All good to go. All right, well, you take it away. Thank you very much. Oh, there we go, go through the slides. Um, hi everyone, it's uh, exciting to be somewhere in person today and to have the opportunity to speak to you uh, around engaging bots for multiplayers and for multiplayer games. My name is Christopher. Uh, I started a company along with some other folks called Model AI. And what we're doing in Model AI, what our business is about, is essentially we're building what we're calling an AI engine. It is essentially a system for delivering AI bots for all parts of the game development, launch, and live operations process. And, uh, and the talk that I'm, that I'm giving today is about uh, one of the many use cases that you can do with, uh, with artificial intelligence and an AI engine. Specifically today, I'll be talking about the, the little third graphic on the, on the slide here, player bots. Um, so what it means to deploy and implement player bots uh, that play against players in your, in your multiplayer game. Specifically, I'll be, I'll be talking about how we did that. I'll give you a case study um, for a, a game called Fortune Fight. This is a game that, uh, that came out uh, on Steam in, uh, in 2020, and we worked with uh, developers to implement uh, some multiplayer bots that when you sign on to the game, you can, uh, you can play against other players or you can play against uh, these bots inside of Fortune Fight. And I'll, I'll speak to you specifically about uh, the needs that the developers were facing, how we addressed this. Um, I'll talk about sort of like how we identified what kind of bots to build and how we went about it. I'll go into a little bit of technical detail as well. I'll talk a little bit about how we balanced engineering and, uh, and machine learning. So good old fashioned classic AI and, uh, and then some, some modern machine learning stuff put in there. And, and I'll talk a little bit about what kind of uh, an impact this had for the game in terms of engagement and retention. And then sort of like uh, building on, jumping off from that, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about where we sort of like see multiplayer bots headed in this space that sits between classic AI and machine learning in the future. And, uh, and hopefully um, you'll have some questions and we can have a discussion about that. So introducing Fortune Fight, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it is a team-based game. It's a four versus four um, player game. Um, so you set up in, uh, in different kinds of teams and you are deployed into these sort of uh, wacky arenas where you, you face off against another team. So like classic action team-based gameplay, uh, but there is a little bit of a twist in Fortune Fight or actually a couple. The, uh, the first twist is that you are fighting both um, with melee weapons and you're also doing range, ranged combat at the same time. And you have to switch between those two things. The other thing is that these, these melee weapons that you're using, you actually build them yourself. So what they, the way that, uh, that the game works is that over time you collect different kinds of cards that will you, give you different kinds of, uh, of components for your weapons. And when you put that together and, uh, and that becomes a weapon that you're bringing into the next round. So, so the way that the game really feels to play is, uh, is that you're sort of like starting out with a basic weapon and then over time you build it up to crazier and crazier weapons for your own designs and all sort of like unexpected and, and crazy things happen in the game. So what you're seeing here is sort of like a, a very typical way um, of, of playing the game. This is what a typical session would, looks, would look like. Uh, you have some players here that are trying to, to capture a, a, you know, um, a point here on the level and everybody sort of like converges on this and you have these big wonderful scrums of people engage, engaging in, uh, in melee combat and, uh, and you have some people supporting from afar as well. That's, that's what the game's about. It was uh, built and launched by Flamebait Games. And what we did for them was that we, uh, we put in the bots for, for, for the game. So, uh, so when you're playing the game and you don't have enough human players around or you might not have somebody at your particular skill level, well, you'll be playing uh, against one of the bots that, uh, that we built for the game. A little bit about the uh, Fortune Fight. Uh, I talked about the gameplay just a second ago. So it has three different game modes. You can play Capture the Flag. You can play Elimination, where it's just about killing everyone else from the opposing team. Or you can play Push the Cart, uh, which you're probably familiar with from, from other online uh, team-based action games. We have the card-based weapon building, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And, uh, and the game is made in Unity, but it is built with Quantum from, uh, from Photon. 
And if you're not familiar, uh, photon engine and quantum has a bunch of like interesting characteristics. From an AI perspective and as a bot developer, the four things that are really interesting to me is that the, the engine is deterministic. So if you record something that happened inside of a gameplay session, you can actually replay it with 100% fidelity. This is absolutely excellent for training bots for games. Um, if you need to run game simulations, you can run it without running the Unity game engine, which is pretty interesting as well if you're into bot training. Um, it saves uh, perfect replays, which is something that'll be, that will be really comes in handy when you need to do bot training. I'll show you that in just a sec. And it is very, very fast, which is something that you like uh, if you use machine learning for game development as well. So that's, that's sort of like the stack that the game sits on. And, uh, and building from that, we had a conversation with the devs over at Flamebait. We asked them, you know, okay, so you're building a real-time skill-based skill multiplayer game. What do you really need from the bots? What's the thing that you would like as a game designer? What's the thing that you think would make a delta to your game? What would make this more exciting to your players? And the first thing that came up, of course, was that they said, well, listen, we're building, uh, we're launching a, a multiplayer game. It's team-based and we're gonna need to fill up these teams. The game, the game is actually only you know, super great when you have maybe four versus four, three versus three. That's when the game really shines. So we wanna make sure that you always have players available to play against you. And can you help us with bots for that? And, and we said, of course. And these bots will also need to be uh, working in a sort of like team-based fashion. You can't just have them going rogue. You can't just have them pursuing their own objectives. They, uh, they need to, to, to work with, uh, with the other team members, even if you're just like one human on your team. And looking at that sort of like, what does that mean for the user experience in, in broader terms? Of course, what, what they're looking for and what they, what they were looking for was in particular getting a really positive first time user experience. Because when you jump into a multiplayer game like this, obviously, if you're not having fun in the first like two to five minutes and you're just trying out the title, you're not meeting any other players, um, you're probably not going to stick around. Um, so really sort of like the two, the two things that they were, were driving at, the two things that they were looking for from the bots was, was the right game field to give you that uh, positive fatui and making sure that you always had someone to play against. Um, so, so after we took a look at that and we had a look at the gameplay, here's another example of what, what if one of the maps looks, what that looks like and, and what the bots look like. Uh, we sort of like went in and had a conversation with the game developers and looked at the tech stack and talked about how to implement this. Um, we started by, by having a look at the, at the core loop of the game. And there are really two parts of the, of the core loop. Uh, the first part is that you craft your weapon. So this is where you collect sort of like all the interesting components that you're gonna be, be putting onto your weapon. Uh, you're seeing I'm, I'm building something here, which is, it has some sort of like smite art going on and, and maybe also a flamethrower and maybe it needs like another blade on the side. Um, and so when you're a player that comes into this game, you'll be building these weapons and putting them into Fortune Fight for you to play with. Now, interestingly, the bots need to do the same thing. And so um, what we were really interested in in this case was figuring out a way where we could have the bots construct their own weapons and doing it, doing it in a way that seems sort of like plausible. So we wanted them to build weapons the same way that, that players would build weapons. Uh, on top of that, they needed to build weapons that would work in melee and range combat, and they needed to use them collaborative, collaboratively. So the question was, of course, you know, how do you get your bots to do these things? Um, and the approach that we took with this was that we actually taught the bots how to do this by looking at how the human players did it. So rather than trying to come up with just, you know, our own algorithm or trying to build sort of like a static system, we built a system that would ingest the data of how the current players, the, the soft launch players were doing it in Fortune Fight, and then would learn from that how to build weapons of their own that were sort of like plausible, reasonable, and would work in a team-based combat setting. The way that, the, that we went ahead and did this, that was essentially that we took the different parts of the weapons. So, you know, uh, for instance, a tomahawk might go well with a spring, which might go well with some kind of like buff that really increases the damage of your tomahawk weapon. And we'd look at that and say like, that's sort of like a plausible set. We take these different kinds of weapon parts, we put them together, and then we say, these are sort of like, this is a selection that you can have as a bot. Then we would pull from the player data and we would learn sort of like what would a human do if you gave them these elements? What is sort of like the likelihood that they would put the tomahawk on top of the spring, that it would go here? All these different like sort of like likelihoods of where you put the different parts of the weapons. That's what we learned from the replays of the player data. Because as I mentioned before, this was already sort of like a feature of the engine, but we could pull this out from every single game match that was happening. Or we could take that data and use it for the learning purpose. So eventually we, we ended up being pretty happy with this. And that was sort of like the first challenge of building the bots for this game, making sure that they were entering the playing field with something that, that felt right and looked right. 
And that meant that, uh, that we could move on to the bigger part of the challenge, which is all about the fighting in Fortune Fight. So here's a small example of, um, of how the fighting can play out. And in particular, if you have two players against each other, it actually gets a little bit intricate. Um, before you were maybe seeing you had this like big scrum and you know you had eight players just whacking away each, each, each other uh, at the same, the same part of the level. But once you have these like individual face-offs in Fortune Fight, uh, there's a little more to it. So what you can see here is that the, the red player is kind of like keeping, keeping um, the blue player away using the flamethrower and then trying to sort of like move in and trying to, uh, to whack them uh, once they get close enough. So doing this sort of like keep away, approach, hit, go back, keep away. And that's exactly the kind of behavior that we were interested in getting into the bots. That's sort of like, it's contextual. You need to take sort of like the surroundings into account. You need to understand what's going on. And at the same time, you need to sort of like, you know, balance your actions between, am I using the gun? Am I using the melee weapon? Am I aggressive? Am I defensive? And all of this sort of like behavior, of course, you, you can implement that using classic AI techniques. Uh, probably you could do something like this with behavior trees as well. Uh, but what we opted to do was try and capture this kind of behavior from what the players were doing in the game and then teach the bots to do it from the examples that we saw from the players. And essentially the, the paradigm that we implemented here was that we said, okay, we're gonna collect player, uh, player data directly from what's going on in the game. Then we're going to train all the little nitty gritty parts of the gameplay and the, the action and the combat. We're gonna train that directly off what the players did. And then the top level parts, we're not really that interested in getting the machine learning to handle that. And that was, that was for two different reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, it can be difficult to get right. I don't know if you saw the news on uh, Sony recently did some very interesting work on Gran Turismo with the, with the drivers there. Uh, obviously there's been work in you know, stuff like uh, the StarCraft AI or the, the stuff that uh, OpenAI did in Dota. But what is, is sort of like characteristic about these projects is that they require quite a lot of tweaking and a, a really, really large amount of training. So the approach that we took here was sort of like, if, was, was thinking, well, what if we take the sort of like high level decision-making and all the strategy and we implement that in a classic AI fashion. In this case, we implemented it using a finite state machine. And then we let the machine learning learn, you know, everything about sort of like the combat dance and, you know, the, the small moment to moment choices that you were seeing in the video before. So that's what we did. And it turned out to, to work pretty well. Uh, and we ended up with a system that was sort of like a mix between this classical AI and, and machine learning. Uh, specifically, the, the architecture that we had for those who are interested in that uh, was sort of like a finite state machine sitting at the top. And that's sort of like classic AI making all the decisions about should I go for a waypoint? Should I try and be defensive? Should I try and really like get into the mix? And then at the lower level, we put in the machine learning parts everywhere where it made sense, essentially. Um, the specific machine learning technique that we used, and if, if you want to chat about that later, I'm, I'm absolutely available, but I won't go into too much detail, uh, but we were using something called imitation learning or behavioral cloning. It's essentially a way of teaching a neural network using machine learning to sort of like look at the situation, look at the actions that the player is taking, and then you sort of like learn, well, next time in a, I'm in a situation that looks kind of like this, what would this player do? What would a group of players do? Based on what I've seen before, what would be the next natural thing to do? That's sort of like the easiest way of explaining how behavioral cloning or imitation, work, uh, imitation learning works. So, so we did a bunch, uh, a bunch of training there and implemented that. We collected the data for that uh, using frame-by-frame -frame data out of the, out of the multiplayer engine. Uh, here's a small example of what, that's looks, what that looks like when you collect data sets like this. You can see for every match that happened in the game, we'd be able to say you know, exactly where did the player go, second by second, what were they doing, uh, what kind of weapons were they using, what kind of actions were they taking. And so we put that together and we had a look at it and we said like, how much data do you really need to get this sort of like hybrid approach working? Uh, because again, you've probably heard that other AI techniques, they can take you know, tens of thousands of hours to train and uh, you need tons of computers, it's very expensive. But it turns out if you take this like hybrid approach to making these bots, you can get a lot of these benefits with a lot less, uh, with, with a much smaller investment. Specifically what we saw was that uh, for the behavior that, that I'm showing you today, and all the behavior I've been showing you on screen were actually our bots, except for the main player character, which was me. Uh, but all the other characters that you were seeing up until now, they were bots implemented using the system. Well, we could get this kind of behavior out of the bots with less than 10 hours of gameplay data. Um, and that's where like across a few players, but you don't even need thousands. 
uh, with just like you know tens of thousands of frames of actions and training a network. Um, in most cases, it only took like one hour, uh, but I, you know I, I don't want to overpromise. I think you know with less than five hours of training time, you'd be able to build out these kind of machine learning models for for these kinds of bots. And what that really means is that this is not necessarily a static implementation of bot behavior. You can actually take new data in and you can start updating these on demand. Because if you don't need a ton of data, you don't need a ton of training time, this becomes more like um, sort of like a living system rather than a one-time implementation that you put into your game. So if you put in new game features, uh, new weapons, if you change your audience, or if you have new, new groups of players that might be interesting, well, you can just take this approach, sample a little bit of data from your player base, put it through the training pipeline and redeploy the models and you'll get that represented in the behavior that you're seeing inside of your game. And that means you can keep up with the player meta and keep the, uh, the bot behavior relevant. Uh, just giving you a small example of, of how it sort of like looks side by side. Again, you know, this is, this is more of a thing that you, you need to feel when you're playing the game. Um, but on the right hand side here, you sort of have more dynamic interaction between the bots. You'll see a little bit of circling. You'll see more intelligent use of the, the melee weapons. Whereas in the standard scripted bots, and of course, this is just, you know, you could script many different bots, but this is the one that our system replaced. Uh, we were getting sort of like less organic and more mechanical behavior out of us. Um, so always interesting to see these things side by side. So the, the impact on Fortune Fight. Uh, the developers were very happy with it. They focused a lot on the fact that uh, that this seemed to give, give the bots personality. Uh, they felt that uh, that the game feel got a lot better. Uh, but perhaps most importantly, after they put these bots into the game and shipped an update with them, they saw a 50% increase in their day one retention for, for new players coming into the game. And so that's kind of like what we're also building this argument off, that, that having this kind of like human-like behavior in your game can really make a difference to how people experience it. So a quick takeaway from, from what we learned from this case, um, you can definitely use machine learning even if you're building a smaller game, and you can obviously also use it if you're building a bigger game. Um, deploying these kinds of bots, um, at least you know, based on this case study, can directly improve your, your game metrics. Uh, and we think that it's, it's a good idea to be smart about how you combine classic AI techniques. You'll probably already have these competences on your team with, uh, with machine learning techniques uh, that you sort of like build in there to, for a, a hybrid approach. And you can sort of like trade your resources between how much of your, your time do you want to put into engineering and how much do you want to put into machine learning. And then you, you need to find the right balance there. Um, thinking about this sort of like a little bit toward the future, uh, what else could you do this, with this? Well, you're obviously not constrained to having one kind of bot for, for your game. Um, if you decided to train the bot on different parts of your player data, maybe the novice players, the medium players, and the elite players, well, obviously you could build bots that look like those different parts of your player base. And if you're really ambitious, maybe you split your player base into many different groups and you start serving those bot ups, uh, bots up to players of different skill levels in order to give an, an even better experience in the game. Um, very long term, I think it's, uh, it's also realistic, but you can take the same approach because you only need 10 hours of gameplay and you could probably also train them to represent an individual player. And obviously some game, games do this already. Uh, you'll probably know it for some motorsport have something called Drivatars, you know, Killer Instinct. They have something called uh, Shadow Play, I believe. Um, but this is something that, that I think is, you know, essentially available. any multiplayer game would be able to do this using this kind of an approach. Um, yeah, so that's, that's just for a quick recap. Uh, we saw this impact on the player experience, on the, um, on the fatuity of the players, uh, resulted in better retention, and the machine learning really provided better sort of like real feeling experience, and there are some, some update um, opportunities that you get by implementing a system like this. Thank you very much. Thank you to, to Photon for having this track. Thank you to Flamebait Games for, for letting us present, and thank you for listening. Great stuff, Christopher. That was really interesting. Um, we, we do have a little bit of time for uh, questions. We could probably take one or two. So does anyone have any questions? No? No? Maybe? Yes? No? OK, no, <laughs> apparently not. But um, if you have any questions, you can obviously contact Christopher uh, um, either on his email or uh, he'll I'm sure uh, pretty much he'll be around. I'll, I'll be around the rest of the day, email yeah. or Twitter. Uh, Brilliant. Works. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much.